long before child molesters took the crown, it was always transportation that was the arch nemesis of children. Unless it was a paedophile driving a bus, now you'd be doubly fucked. Literally. But who better to protect our younglings than third-rate British celebrities? Will they see that car? In the 80s, we had the likes of David Prowse. You know, the bloke who played Darth Vader. Teaching us how to cross the road with potentially copyright infringing R2-D2. And erratically changing his accent with shitty dubs in different adverts. Looks like you two need a lesson in crossing the road. Where do you think you're going, you dumbo? Green Cross. And before the days of George Lucas annoying Cornishman, we had an ex-wrestling Oedipus complex DJ in the form of Jimmy Savile, teaching us to wear a seatbelt. Click the seatbelt, even if you are just going around the corner, click, click every trip. And in the end, when the budgets went down they could no longer afford real stars, they then compromised with Welsh cartoon characters like Super Ted here, warning us about road safety. Remember, I can't be there to save you. Well, what kind of fucking use are you as a superhero then? Tosser. But like Apaches, we've got 1970s film directors to finally thank when it comes to mentally scarring school children about public transportation with our next movie. A movie that was so horrific, they actually pulled it several months later. So for your consideration, I give you the 1977 public information film, The Finishing Line. And if you thought Apaches had stupid and gory deaths, you ain't seen nothing yet. After watching the ending credits at the beginning of the film, for some reason, we're treated to a rather scowling monologue from an off-screen headmaster, who I'm not sure is supposed to be dead or not, judging from the echo they've added to it. I'll say it again. The railway is not the game field. Yeah, but if it was, I'd have special races and plenty of trains. Jesus Christ! How fucked up do you have to be to possibly even think that holding Olympic Games on train tracks could possibly ever be a good idea? There'd be my special scoring system and a big scoreboard 20 feet high. Oh, while you're at it, why not have a home for blind orphans in the middle of an army testing field? Or Paralympics on a minefield? Oh yeah, I nearly forgot. I'd have a band. Oh yeah, because the harmonious toes of the brass instruments beautifully accompany the sounds of children's death screams. Anyhow, so we're introduced to the contestants of the upcoming Slaught Olympics. While well, I say introduced, does this pretty much several minutes of location filming of a bunch of kids pissing about? Yeah, good one, teacher. That kid's about to paint a 320 to Panditon with the insides of his skull, and you're more concerned about him flicking a bit of grass in someone's eye. This is all filler for a 30 minute movie, so I'm just gonna skip it on here. So the first event is to climb through a fence and run across the track. Sounds pretty simple. But in true Apache's fashion, they even managed to fuck that up. On your mark. Yeah, hold your horses. You'll all get to be killed in good time. But all of a sudden, one of the girls in the blue team trips on the track. Oh, come on. That scene was so pathetic, they had to splice two scenes together to make it look less shit. Oh, she was knocked out, was she? Well, that would explain why you're dragging her head to the other rail to make it seem half plausible then, doesn't it? Just leave her, she's done for. I've got to say, though, for someone who's had their foot run over by a train weighing several tons, it's in remarkably good shape. Besides, how the fuck do you die from having your foot run over? Oh god, now a whole bunch of kids are doing that gormless stare that Danny and Apaches did. I guess staring into the face of death turns you into a retard or something. Well, apart from that kid there who looks like he's just followed through and hope nobody's noticed. But we're off to event two. This is quite possibly the only sadistic event of the film, where the kids have to throw bricks at a passing train and they're scored on if they smash a window, and more so if they hit a passenger. And this is where they really up the gore factor of the film. So we're treated some more build-up to the event filler material. So get those rocks going, now run. Now hold up. Wait, 
Did I just hear the director show action? Hang on, I'm gonna play that again. So get those rocks going, alright? Now hold up in the Jesus! Not only has the director agreed to make a stupid film with an idiotic plotline, he can't even be asked to edit the fucking thing properly. But away they go throwing coloured bricks at the speeding train. Except they're obviously not bricks, they're bits of sponge. Look, this kid is have the brick he threw bounce straight back at him. So after that rather confusing scene, let's see the results. Broken window, green, two point oh look, they're bricks again. Ah, oh, that poor girl getting hit. Oh Christ, she's going out for ginger. When it rains, it pours for some people. Broken window, two points. And top marks at the end there, not only did you smash the driver's window, you managed to glue ketchup sachets to his eyes as well. So at the end of that event, we can clearly see that the yellow team are in the lead. No, I don't give a shit either. So the next event is more or less a game of chicken. It's essentially like the first event, except, well... Yes, they've run out of ideas for events after only two. So more filler of them getting ready for the event. Look, look, just listen. I want you to run across the track. I couldn't care what happens to you, but you, you just run across and you win. You're strategizing on how to play chicken. Fuck off. You haven't got the nerve. Just do as I say. You're like a jellion. That's right. He is like a jellion. What's a jellion? Hang on. I've got a book here. Uh, jillion, jillion, jillion. Oh, yes. Jellion. A mop-headed child from the 70s that gives pointless strategic advice. Yep, he's a jellion, all right. Oh, Christ, they're all doing it now. Why? It's a game of chicken. The object is not to fucking die. How many bloody tactics could there possibly be? And thus begins the most idiotic game of chicken in human history. Maybe those orders were useful after all, as most of the contestants decide it's a far better tactic to lie in the middle of the train tracks instead. You see, this is where Apache's also went batshit insane. The director needs to learn there's a difference between being careless and being a complete and utter spastic. Again, we go back to the aftermath of all the corpses that the train had hit, all in remarkably good condition. Look at that smug little shit there thinking, hmm, if only they listened to my advice. And off to the final event, the Great Tunnel Walk. Quite possibly the most simple of the lot, really. The kids just have to walk through a tunnel to the other end and not die in the process. But yes, you can obviously guess, even this simple task is too much for most of them. On your mark. Get set. We can cut to the next scene whenever you're ready, guys. Seriously, are you going to film every single child going into that tunnel? Seriously? And now you're filming nothing! But the inevitable happens. Kids go in one end, train goes in the other. And well, you can obviously guess what happens next. And if you guess several severely blooded and crippled kids hobble out to the tune of entrance of the gladiators, then you've either seen this film before, or just as fucking crazy as the director was. Give me a name. Gary Collins. How the hell did that sound like Gary Collins? We were about to call in medics to drag out the remaining contestants, but unfortunately the necrophilia division on Nambler got there first. Well, apart from this child, he actually fell unconscious after looking at that guy's shirt. And brilliant. Lay their corpses on the tracks. 
Nice one. That way they can get run over again. I can see you blinking, Blondie. You're supposed to be dead. This film also has quite possibly the most manic depressive bad in history. They're playing entry to the gladiators when these kids are getting run over in the tunnel. And now that they're dragging their corpses out, you're playing something a lot more sombre. Make your fucking minds up. And so the film ends with that kid remembering that ghost headmaster again. Still thinking that that murder Olympics is a good idea. Before the movie abruptly ends. Due to them sticking the ending credits at the beginning of the movie. Again, why? And that, my friends, is the finishing line. Like I said earlier, the film was deemed so horrific, they actually pulled it after six months in favour of a much softer movie called Robbie. About a young boy who loves playing football. But when he gets his legs run over by a train, he gets all upset because he can't use his new football boots anymore. So at least he's got his priorities right then. But like always on that guy with the glasses, I'm going to let you watch the entire film all yourself. All you need to do is to click on that video underneath me, and you can watch it to your heart's content. I've been Guru Larry, and I'm going to leave with this rather interesting comment. Playing on train tracks is a lot like a retarded dwarf. It's not big, and it's not clever. Yes, they've run out of ideas for events after only two. Bollocks.